Good morning to everyone, a good day and good evening wherever you are. I'm glad to be here back uh, sharing with you the third session of uh, this meditation and healing series. And as of right now, we are planning to have a session today and a session on Tuesday and on Wednesday probably and see where we get there and then probably give a break for people to practice and then get one or two more sessions the following week. So really very happy to see all of you here and hope that uh, some of you were able to, uh, to, uh, to review uh, the videos and meditate and practice and uh, it worked out for you. Uh, and for the people who are helping me with the uh, so just like the last two times we're going to start with uh, some meditation and then we'll have some teachings afterwards and today we're actually going to focus on understanding the relationship between the heart our body and the universe as a healing tool for ourselves and for others and how this is really inseparable. So we can sit with our back straight and just again feel the connection between your seat, between your sitting bones <coughs> and your seat. If you're sitting on the ground, on a cushion, if you're sitting on a chair, just let go. Just let the gravitation relax and let you melt into the ground. All the struggles, all the tensions, all the stirring up of emotions, everything that goes inside our body creates a certain tightness. And just by letting go into your seat, you relax it. You can feel the opening at your basis in the perineal area and how it immediately causes a sense of relaxation, allows the diaphragm to open up and move more easily. It's quite of remarkable to see how such a small thing changes our whole Uh, our whole uh, somatic sensation and from there there is an energy that comes up along the spine all the way to the top of your head and naturally your chin comes a little bit inside and your back of your neck elongates your shoulders are relaxed and your hands are wrapped around the knees or hand inside hand let your shoulder blades open up so the bottom of the shoulder blades is inside and the top is outside and naturally it opens the upper back the tongue is loose in the mouth gently touching the roof of the mouth and your gaze is soft resting a few feet in front of you a few meters in front of you and just allow yourself to relax in this place. And just feel how bringing yourself into your body affects your breath and affects your mind. And just pay a little bit more attention to the sensation. Now that we've prepared our body, we're going to prepare our breath by inhaling white light and exhaling gray black smoke. We inhale to both nostrils and then we exhale one side, one side, one side, one side, one side, one side, three times. And then we inhale and exhale from both nostrils. So we inhale, close the left nostril and exhale. Inhale. Close the right nostril and exhale. Inhale. One 
one more time. And from both nostrils, inhale. And one last deep breath. And exhale through your mouth. <sighs> and just let go. And let your breath even out and feel how the effect on your body and your speech, on your breath, affects your sensation inside your body, the intercellular space inside your body, and how it affects your mind, how it creates space in your mind. And just stay there. I want to emphasize a little bit more the body, speech, and mind in the preparation because it's so important. It's really what set up the whole meditation. And in fact, it's a practice on its own. Everything is included just in the states of preparation for body, speech, and mind. So you can just feel it. As the breathing evens out, you can get a sense of the movement and the calmness of the ocean, just like your breath, moving in and out with no effort. Now that we've prepared our body, we prepared our speech, we are going to prepare our mind. Prepare our mind by giving rise to love and compassion, to bodhicitta, for ourselves and for all living beings. And the starting point to prevent judgment and discrimination later on is to come from, to have our starting point the starting point of equanimity, of evenness, of realizing that every, on the simplest level, that every living being, including ourselves, including people we like, we don't know or we don't like, every living being wants to be happy. And every living being, because of our tendency to grasp and to hold and to identify and to fixate, experiences difficulties and suffering. And understanding this and letting go of the grasping and the struggle with this naturally opens our heart. And we open our hearts to ourselves and to others. Just opening our heart. In a deeper level, the equanimity is in that everything that arises to the senses from the outside, everything that you see and you hear from this picture, from the view, is impermanent. It changes all the time. It needs a perceiver and somebody to perceive it. And everything that we feel inwardly, emotions, feelings, thoughts, body sensations is changeable. So when we understand this, it loosens up the fixation and it allows naturally for us to be less tight and open our hearts. So this preparation of the mind doesn't only open the heart and generate love and compassion, but it does it inseparable from creating openness. And that's why it's such a profound stage. I was telling you, when I teach, I tell the story that at some point after 20 years of practice, I spent three years focusing mainly on this part in my practice every day. So just open yourself up by understanding this and then letting go and letting it get absorbed into your being.
Now that we have prepared our body, we have prepared our speech and we have prepared our mind, we can focus on a certain object, like a pebble or a picture or whatever you want. You, you put it below your eye level and you focus your gaze into the object. Just like we did on Thursday and Friday. And we add our breath. We exhale to the point, to the object, and we inhale from it. And we add our mental focus. So the three doors, the body, the speech, and the mind. <coughs> And by focusing on one thing, the distraction around, the neurosis, the tendency of the body, of the mind to jump from thing to thing, slowly falls away. And we find a place of calmness. This is why, of peace. This is why it's called calm abiding meditation, shamatha. If we feel very restless in the beginning, it's very natural. We just come back to the meditation. If you feel restless, then when you inhale, hold your air for a fraction of a second down in your abdomen. And if you feel that you're falling asleep, then you bring your gaze upward and you hold your breath between the exhalation and inhalation. So again, we focus with our gaze, with our breath, and with our mind. And slowly we bring our gaze to our eye level. And we just open to any visual sensation that comes from the front. From the right. From behind. From the left and from above and below. The body is stable, unmoving, the breath is flowing smoothly, and you just open up. And with every exhalation, you just let go. And feel how your visual field how your experience is expanding, is becoming less tight and less effortful in the gap between the exhalation and the inhalation. And you can slowly now add other sensations, any sounds that come from the front, from the right, from behind, from the left, and from above and below. And in the same way, you open yourself up to all the other sensory input, tactile input, olfactory input, and any taste. Just open up. Use this very spacious spot and the sound of the waves. And if your thoughts go away, if you get carried away, if you're new to this, then just bring yourself back by putting more attention into the breath and especially ride the natural letting go of the exhalation process. When the lungs let go, you write it with your mind, with your vision, and at the end, between the exhalation and the inhalation, <coughs> there is a deeper letting go. Our 
our body is straight, our breath is flowing smoothly, and our mind, our hearts are open. from this place to bring your attention to the top of your head without contracting just keeping open and while keeping all your all field outside completely open and you drop your attention into your heart Say hello to our heart, in the center of our chest. And whatever feeling comes, feeling of calm, feeling of joy, fear, sadness, pressure, whatever comes, you just accept it. You just embrace it with no judgment, without rejection and without holding, just accepting. And just to introduce a little bit of a deeper understanding, especially for people who are trained or did mindfulness. In mindfulness, you are mindful of something. In per definition, it means that it's an effortful process because we have to be mindful of something else. Here, when you accept, you let go of the mindfulness. You let go of the trying to observe. You just melt into the experience, slowly transforming the acceptance, transforming the watching into freedom, with the observer and what is being observed is inseparable. And let this sense of openness now permeate every cell in your body and open into the big space. So the outside and the inside of your body become inseparable and you become inseparable from the outer environment and you just sit there relax and opens the body is stable and moving like a mountain the breath is flowing smoothly with no effort just like the ocean The waves are inseparable from the ocean. And the mind is open like the sky. And just rest in this place. And let this sense of openness penetrate into your being. From this place, you take your hands and you bring them to your heart. And you say hello to your heart. And just let go, let your shoulders relax, elbows touching the body. And just feel the warmth of the heart. And feel how this warmth expands over your chest and it goes to any area in your body that needs healing. And let your mind and your heart become inseparable. Feel the inseparability from your thinking process and your heart. And let it expand, feel every cell in your body. And start going out of your body and feeling the space around you. Expanding and opening. And you slowly bring your hands back to your knees and just rest in this place of openness. The body is straight, stable. The breath is flowing smoothly. And the mind is open. From this place, we visualize 
or some people can see white light coming through the top of our head from the universe and filling with the inhalation every cell in our body just like the oxygen comes into the lungs penetrates into the cells between the inhalation and exhalation and when we exhale, when we let go out of the air all our tensions, all our traumas, all our illnesses all our toxins come out as black, gray smoke inhaling white light and exhaling inhaling white light and exhaling any tension and then again letting go after the exhalation and one more time and exhaling and just letting go drop any conceptual effort any analysis any visualization and just let this healing abs get absorbed into your body now that we are less dense that we are more spacious as the holding is loosened up healing can take place it's the difference between trying to go through a wall or finding the door and now we connect with our heart by visualizing white light at the center of our heart. And when we inhale, we bring white light from the universe. We connect the universe with our heart. We have never been separated. And it intensifies with inhalation the white light in the heart. And just like the heart shares blood with the whole body when it contracts, when we exhale, the white light from the heart expands everywhere every cell in our body. We inhale white light to the heart and we exhale it to every cell in our body. This is the first level visualization of open heart medicine. Utilizing the physiology of the heart to connect us with the universe and heal ourselves. Every cell in our body. Inhaling white light to the heart and exhaling it to every cell in our body. And then inhaling white light and exhaling it to every cell in our body. And we just let go. Just One more time, we inhale white light to our heart and when we exhale, we spread the light through the body and let the light come out of our skin and fill the whole universe. Inhaling white light to the heart and we exhale, the white light goes to every cell, goes through our skin and fills the whole universe. Where everything becomes the evenness, the equanimity of white light, of purity, of healing. We just rest in this place. the camera was a little bit bigger we'd get up and do some exercises with you some qigong or breathing maybe we'll do some breathing in the last session so hello everyone and thank you for joining me and i want a little bit to give some teaching some explanation on things that we practice and to move into open heart medicine really my my unique offering and why i'm teaching so before we talk about the heart, we should talk about our body. About how each and one of us is a true miracle. We are made, people say for some reason, 37 and a half trillion cells. But let's say 50 trillion to round the number. So we are made from 50 trillion cells. Okay, it's 50 with 12 zeros. Okay, so 50 million, it's a lot, times 1,000 times 1,000 and each of these cells 
has a boundary, has a coating, has a membrane, has its own definition. And each of these cells, and this is truly mind-blowing, how many reactions do you think a cell has in one second? One million reactions. So in our body we got 50 trillion cells, each of them having one million reactions every single second. Yet all our body is maintained together. Our cells who have different role, different survival time, different relationship, uh, affect different chemicals and proteins, they all started from the few, few cells in the blastula that were identical. And how were these cells created? With some rare exceptions, unfortunately. These cells, us, we were created out of an act of love. For generations over generations over generations. Acts of love created us and all this ancestral lineage is coming into us and it's expressed in every single cell in our body. Now we talked on Thursday and Friday about the root of suffering, the root of difficulties, the root of diseases. And the root of disease is grasping, it's identification, it's fixation. We, identif we identify with something that doesn't have absolute permanent truth, that changes all the time, is solid, and we don't want to let go. And what is the expression of this, which is innate and instinctive within each of us? It's the survival response. And this survival response that allows us to survive is the root of our difficulties, of our suffering, of our identification. Start it. Let me just see. Oh, it just, okay, the connection is okay now. I guess we had a connection problem. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask Kirsten, who helps me to send me a text on Facebook if things are working out. I can just see that. Okay, it's coming back. All right. So, uh, my apologies. Technology is never my strength. And the, the, re the reception is not great here, but I love this spot, so I still try to, to teach from here. So, let's go back into open heart medicine. Let's go back into our body. And let's, uh, let's talk again about, uh, about, uh, about how the heart relates. So we, g we talked about the cells. We talked about the 50 trillion cells. We talked about the 1 million reactions which happen every second. And we also have about 50 trillion organisms that also live inside our body. Different organisms. This is our microbiome that we also have a relationship with. So all of this is working together. But what's specific for the cells in our body is that they inhale in nourishment and they exhale out byproducts, waste byproducts that they don't want. Or they send out certain protein that actually affect the environment. And this is the same with the organs. An organ gets nourishment that goes into the tissues, that goes into the cells, and it sends out dirty blood, as venous blood, that goes back to the heart. The one organ that functions differently is the heart. And through the heart, the lungs help the heart to fulfill its function. The heart takes in dirty blood and gives out clean blood. The heart is fundamentally different than any other organ in the body. In fact, if the heart doesn't get dirty blood, if it doesn't accept with open arms all the waste products that from perspective of the time that they arrive to the heart belong to the past, right? They have been excreted in the past from the cells and now they arrive at the heart. This is how we are built. 
Well, if the heart doesn't get this waste, dirty blood, it doesn't have enough pressure to give up clean blood. And what does the heart do? It connects to the universe, to the lungs, by sending the blood to the lungs, where it exchanges with the universe, where we have a connection with the universe, where our letting go of our own dramas is unnoticeable by the open-hearted infinite universe that accepts it, gives us clean air. That's why it's so important to take care of the environment. And global warming is a reflection of our own inner warming, our own inner inflammation. We take in oxygen and then the heart gives it out. What's unique about the heart is that it gives out blood all the time. So it's not just a simple pump, but it constantly takes out waste material, takes in waste material, and gives out, us, gives out pure blood. But two more very unique details about the heart. One is that the aorta, the main artery that comes out of the heart, is rigid. It doesn't contract or expand. And as such, it sends blood everywhere without discrimination. Compared to smaller arteries, and arterioles and capillaries which are no longer close to the heart, they are controlled by different organs in different places, and by our survival system, by our autonomic nervous system, they can contract and expand and decide who gets blood, who doesn't get blood. They have judgment. The heart gives without judgment. And what is the first artery out of the heart that nourishes an organ? It's the coronary arteries. So the first thing that the heart does as part of nourishing everything else with no judgment is that the heart nourishes itself. That's why when we practice we open our hearts to ourselves and to others. It's part of us having an open heart. And that's why self loving ourselves is inseparable from loving ours. It's not self-focus, it's not self-absorbent, because then we're not giving. It's just seeing the inseparability. So this is our, our heart built. Because for the heart, taking care of the body, of every cell, is part of its responsibility. Just like an emperor who takes care of all the residents, and that's why the heart is often visualized and seen in Chinese medicine as the emperor organ. The heart does this kind of thing automatically. We don't need to be aware of it. We don't need to think about it. The heart is built to take difficulties and give love and compassion. To take waste material and to give clean, pure blood. But this gives us a profound opportunity to take a ride on these basic properties of the heart, ride on them, and use them with our breath and with our conscious, with our mental analytical understanding. We can develop the qualities of love and compassion by joining forces with the movement of the heart. This is innate in each of us. If you look at the Buddhist approach, if you look at Judeo-Christian approach, for example, if we start with Judeo-Christian approach, it is said that humans, when Adam and Eve were made, they were made in the image of God, B'Tselem Elohim, which means that each cell in our body has the imprint of the divine within it. In, in Buddhist approach, it is said that Buddha nature, the divine quality, is present within each of us. We just lost the ability to recognize it. Our journey in life, our absolute healing, the essence of open heart medicine, is to connect with this quality and bring us home. And that's why the heart is the greatest healer. It reconnects us with the divine, with the Buddha nature within us, no matter what our belief system. And this is part of what the heart is. We are built to do this. 
we don't have to invent it it's within us physiologically so in order to do this we need to develop transformative techniques that instead of responding with the reactivity of survival that gives rise to negative emotion, anger, frustration, fear, jealousy, envy, pride, ignorance, resistance, we just open our hearts. And we do it by contemplating the four immeasurables. Love, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. Love for every living being, compassion is response for difficulties, for suffering. This is profound because if we can develop this, we are switching the, we are switching the survival response to open heart response. Joy in the success of others. So again, instead of having the survival, ego-driven, competitive response, we open ourselves and we help us realize the connectivity between all of us. The interdependence, the avuta dadit between all of us, between every one of ourselves. And equanimity, what we started with. Understanding the equalness in everything. So these are the four immeasurables. And as we contemplate and develop them, we can start connecting with the physiology of the heart and transforming it into meditation practice. So, you can take it in. If you have a chance, I really recommend to listen to this part before tomorrow again, just to absorb it. I apologize for the interruption. I know that people were numbers of viewers were dropping very suddenly and coming back so there must be some issue but the video will be posted in full and you can you can look at it and uh, and 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 absorb it and tomorrow we will practice this for immeasurables and we'll introduce the practice of tonglen of this natural exchange that the how does on the outer level on the level that is taught and the more secretive part, the more uh, advanced, unique part of uh, open heart medicine is taught more in a retreat environment. And, uh, but definitely we'll go through this journey in the next two days. So let's end today with a short meditation. We can sit with our back straight. Just feel our breath flowing smoothly. We can clean our breath one time. Just let our mind and heart open up. And just rest in this openness. And you can visualize from the center of your chest where you have the white light, five color light, white, red, blue, yellow, green, like a rainbow, radiating everywhere going through every cell in your body and feeling the universe and collecting healing energy that comes back into your heart and feel every cell in your body. Light goes out, collects healing energy and comes back to your heart and then goes to every cell in your body. And you do this a few times then you just settle, let the light will get absorbed into your body and just open your mind and heart. And we end with a dedication 
we dedicate that every sentient being will find happiness and health and any benefit that this session has done to any of us is shared with everybody at this very moment for the people and the nations of the earth may not even the names disease famine war and suffering be heard rather may the moral conduct merit wealth and prosperity increase and may supreme good fortune and well-being always arise for them for this very, in this very moment for the people and the nations of the earth May not even the names, disease, famine, war, and suffering be heard. Rather, may the moral conduct, merit, wealth, and prosperity increase. And may supreme good fortune and well-being always arise for them. At this very moment, for the people and the nations of the earth, may not even the names, disease, famine, war, and suffering be heard. Rather, may the moral conduct, merit, wealth, and prosperity increase. And may supreme good fortune and well-being.